On a strange planet dominated by blue aliens called drags, we see that human beings play the role of small creatures that are raised as pets. So today on Cinema Recapped, I'll show you Fantastic Planet. The film begins with a human woman running away with a baby in her arms. We see that she is scared when she turns around as a giant blue hand treats her like a toy. She tries to escape, then is almost cornered and wounded with projectiles. And in the end, we see that the hand drops her from a great height. So, she dies next to her baby. Those who played with her were three alien children who run when they see people approaching. A family appears and a girl sees a crying human baby and decides to adopt him. A voiceover of a human man tells us how his life began there, living in the house of a family that performs astral meditations and they use a strange machine to place a necklace on him in order to control him. We see that the baby was not comfortable with the necklace, but it was used to drag it from one place to another with the wrist control. And the alien girl decides to name him Tear. Over time, the human pet learned that those aliens, called drags, spent most of their time meditating in a way that seemed to send their souls or minds to the sky. However, we see that they must also work, and that they have their executive boards in the whole thing. While on television, some drags say that they brought the human race from another planet thinking that they were intelligent life, but that they discovered that they only had a certain ability to adapt and organize. There is a debate between whether these abilities can evolve into something else, saying that they have less of a lifespan than the drag race, but a greater capacity for reproduction. However, this capacity causes wild human colonies to spread too quickly, unlike the luxury humans they use as pets, whose reproduction was well controlled. We see that Baby Terror serves as entertainment for the drag girl, who plays with him, bathes him, dresses him, and sometimes the boy rebels and bites her. The boy also witnesses how the family sleeps with machines that destroy and rearrange their bodies. We see that the drag girl tries to copy the human eyelashes on her face, and that Baby Tear plays a joke on her with black powder, which she returns with a blow. Another one of the girl's toys is a rainy cloud that can chase the baby and even electrocute him. But even under these circumstances, the voiceover of Tear admits that the drag girl loved him and even taught him to speak. We see that the drag girl gets her education through a headband that transmits all the knowledge to her, and that a malfunction in Tear's necklace made these lessons also reach his head. Outside the house, diamonds grow as if they were plants, and one day the drag girl takes Tear for a walk. In ridiculous clothes, we see that Tear is trapped between diamonds that grow around his body, but the girl can break these diamonds using her whistle. Tear can also do this and has fun breaking all the diamonds. And another day we see that some drag children use their humans to make them fight, joining them by the hair. The girl also wants Tear to fight, and they put him against an old man who starts singing until Tear makes him shut up by choking him. So the drag children have to get him off. Over time, we see that Tear even learned to take lessons himself using the headband. Although the drag parents don't care because they believe that he does not know how to interpret these classes. However, they forbid the girl to take lessons with a human nearby as they believe the human can distract her. We see that the drag girl becomes a teenager who begins to spend time meditating and played less and less with the human. And Ter, not being able to take more lessons with her, decided to run away from the house with the headband. When she realizes the absence of both possessions, the drag girl goes to her mother who tells her to use the remote control to bring the human back. And although the girl does not want to because it could hurt Tear, she ends up doing it anyway. We see that Tear is dragged by his necklace back home, but ends up stuck between two plants. And then another human appears with a gun to remove his necklace. This human also wears a necklace, but she says it is fake and she wears it to deceive the drags. Tear then tells her about the headband and the learnings they can get from it. The woman takes Tear through places where there are strange creatures until she reaches a den of wild humans who laughed at him because of his luxury human dress. This den is known as the Great Tree and Tear is brought before the leader. Tear shows him that he knows how to interpret drag technology so he can help them avoid traps. At night, the leader feeds everyone some stones that make people shiny. 
and we see that this is a ritual for going into pairs, finding a hiding place, and mate. Most wild humans gather to take lessons using the headband, but some believe that such knowledge is not good for humans. So they decide to carry out a combat to decide whether they should continue the lessons or not, in which the positive response wins. A kind of silkworm generates a new outfit for Tear, and then wild humans take him on an expedition in which they steal things from drag people, but then another brand of wild humans steal these provisions from them. Back to the Great Tree, the humans continue to learn about the culture and history of the drags, while Tear gets a girlfriend. Suddenly we see a creature attacking the Great Tree. With its sticky tongue, it eats several humans. However, those who manage to escape hunt the creature, causing it to fall and they take its blood as a drink. Soon after, as they already know how to read the drag language, they realize that aliens have put signs in the surrounding areas in which they warn that they will carry out a massacre to get rid of all the wild humans in that region. The leader of the wild humans decides to set up some lookout posts to avoid being taken by surprise. And one night Terra is attacked by another wild group who kidnap him to ask him what he was doing in those territories. Terra explains that the drags are going to kill everyone in the surrounding areas the next day and therefore they must escape. But the leader of this savage group does not believe him because they think that Terra's group wants to steal their territory. The next morning we see that drags start the massacre using pills that generate deadly smoke for humans, while using other humans with masks to find them. Terror and others manage to escape, but many humans are hit by the pills and gas. When Terror returns to the Great Tree, he finds that most of his friends are dead, although he sees his girlfriend was still alive, so they run away taking the headband with them. We see that outside the perimeter of the massacre, both groups of wild humans have united to survive. And then some drags appear saying that there is a horrible smell of human and they start crushing people with their feet. However, the humans counter attack with their weapons, killing one of the drags in exchange for dozens of human lives. The leader of the great tree died in battle. So the leader from the other savage group takes control of all survivors to take them somewhere safe. As they head there, the drag leaders discuss the death that the humans caused, accepting that they have become bolder and are getting out of control. They also realize that they already know how to read the drag language, since they arrange the supply boxes according to what they bring inside without having opened them. Then they begin to propose measures to bring humans under control, such as multiplying the killing measures by six a better regulation of the luxury human market, and starting to use a new type of deadly weapon against the wild ones. Meanwhile, in another place, we see that a creature is born and another licks it, as if it was its mother, but then it eats it. Then we see that the group of survivors settled in an abandoned rocket factory in which they created a colony, although they plan to dominate the entire planet. Many colonies of wild humans join them, and that with all the knowledge they had obtained from the headband, they managed to minimize the drag tools so they can use them. Thanks to this, they managed to build two rockets while discovering the drags plan a big wild human massacre. Then one day, machines appear in the abandoned factory and throw circles of light that adhere to any surface and which serves for human recognition. Meanwhile, the leader of the humans dies, saying that they must leave in the rockets to another world in which they called fantastic planet and shortly after we see that new machines to kill humans appear ending with dozens of these per second the two rockets are launched while hundreds of humans are left to die in the factory in horrible ways and when the rockets reach the fantastic planet we see that humans find giant headless sculptures there they realize that when the drags meditate their souls are not only sent to the sky but that they reach these headless bodies to meet creatures from other planets with whom they perform their own ritual of reproduction in exchange for nutrients that is vital for their race to survive. Knowing this, humans begin to destroy the giant sculptures, causing panic in the minds and bodies of the drags. Then, the drags decide to make peace with the humans, and we see that many years later, a drag child takes a lesson in which it is explained that after this agreement between races, 
the Drax created a second and artificial planet that humans called Earth and filled it with cities. The end. If you liked this video, please leave a like and subscribe to continue receiving the recaps of the best bizarre and sci-fi movies. My name is TC and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.